fourth grade, it's Miss T here with a science lesson for you guys. Today we're going to be talking some more about insects. Um, I am outside, currently surrounded by insects. There's ants, there's spiders, there's um, little flying bugs, all sorts of fun creepy crawly things. And so in today's video we're going to chat just a little bit more about insects. So. We've been talking through insect life cycles, right? How an insect starts as an egg, and then it goes into a larva stage, then the pupa, and then the adult stage. That's right, there are four stages to insect metamorphosis. Egg, larva, pupa, and adult. That's right. And so we got to see some pictures of the life cycle of an insect that goes through, like this butterfly here, starting as an egg, then it goes into the larva stage, the pupa, and then the adult. Um, so we talked through, um, just briefly, that there is a law of biogenesis, which basically says that life can only come from other life. Life can only come from other life. So something that starts as an egg, and then goes into larva, pupa, and then the adult stage, that's right, that that follows the law of biogenesis. There is life throughout that process. It may look like it's sleeping or like it's dead, but it is very much still alive, even in its cocoon or chrysalis. So we've got a few different insect heads we're going to talk about today, designer heads. So insects um, have very simple body structures, if you think about it, whereas our, our human skeletons, like Zeke and Skelly in the classroom, are very complex. We have a lot of different parts, a lot of different bones and things to remember. It's pretty simple. There are three major parts to an insect, right? There's the head, then there is the thorax, and then the abdomen. Say that with me, please. Head, thorax, and then abdomen. That's right. Today we're talking about the head. So, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to read to you a little bit from our book. God created each kind of insect with special headgear, antennae, mouth parts, and eyes, exactly designed to fit its needs. Two antennae, or feelers, branch out from an insect's head. The singular word is antenna. One antenna, two antennae. Antennae are marvelously designed sense organs that allow an insect to taste, smell, touch, keep its balance, and find direction. If you look at the antennae of several insects through a magnifying glass, you can see how they're all designed differently. The male polyphemus moth has feathery antennae that enable it to smell a female polyphemus moth more than a mile away. The painted lady butterfly has very long antennae with knobs at the end. It uses these to smell flowers and perhaps to hear. The housefly, oh, we all know about the housefly, has two thick, short antennae between its eyes. So they stick right out between its eyes. There's two of them right between its eyes. It uses these to feel change in the movements of the air or to smell rotting meat and garbage. And houseflies love garbage. Those are its favorite foods, in fact, rotting meat and garbage. The female mosquito um, has antennae that are long and thread-like. One way she finds her dinner is by feeling the heat of a warm-blooded animal or person with her antennae. She can also hear with them. Sensula. Most antennae are covered with very tiny sense organs called sensula. Sensula is a plural word. One of these sense organs is a sensulum. So sensula, sensulum, goes with our Latin, um, our Latin suffixes, right? A, a, um, and so on and so forth. So sensulum is one, sensula is many. Some sensula look like tiny hairs. The sensula give insects their senses of touch, balance, hearing, smell, taste, and temperature. The sensula on the antenna help the insect with its senses of smell, taste, and touch. Although the antennae are considered to be the insect's main sense organs, they are not the only organs with sensula. Some insects are covered with them. Some have taste sensula on their legs. That is why a butterfly or a housefly can taste the food it walks over. It's kind of gross and creepy if you think about it. Can you imagine having a taste organ on your leg? So if your leg brushed up by something unpleasant, blah, 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 that would be kind of, kind of gross, but that's how they're designed. <clears throat> eyes. Most insects have a pair of compound eyes, large eyes which are made up of many, many small eyes. These enable the insects to see in almost all directions at once. Insects also usually have several simple, simple eyes in between their large ones. 
With these, they can see light and movement. Um, there are, on a yellow jacket, two big compound eyes and um, three simple eyes. Some insects have um, more, some have less, but since they don't have any eyelids, guess what their eyes do? They stay open all the time. That's, again, kind of creepy to think about it, right? Like we close our eyes, we go to bed, and our eyes are closed, they're protected, or if somebody's, you know, some wind is blowing, we'll close our eyes to keep particles out, dust particles. But insects don't have eyelids. That's so weird. The eyes of insects vary according to their needs. An insect that spends most of its time on the ground feeding on vegetable matter has smaller eyes than an insect does that eats other insects. The dragonfly is one of the fastest insects, and it has especially large eyes which enable it to catch insects while it and its prey are in flight. The dragonfly can see moving insects 18 feet away. The whirligig beetle has two pairs of compound eyes. The upper eyes are designed for seeing above water and the lower for seeing under the water. The whirligig can look up and down at the same time. And the whirligig beetle is an aquatic beetle, so he swims. So that's really important to be able to see up and down while he's swimming through the water. Mouth parts, another part of the head. Remember, insects have three main body parts. What are they, students? That's right, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. That's right, good job. So, God designed a wide variety of mouth parts for insects, depending on the kind of food that they eat. Grasshoppers and crickets need a chewing mouth in order to chew plants. Beetles, whose name means biters, use their chewing mouths to chew plants and other insects. Termites and cockroaches also have chewing mouth parts. The long sucking mouth of the butterfly and moth is especially designed as a straw for reaching nectar in flowers. The insect coils up its straw when it's not drinking. So it's one of those twirly straws that they kind of curl back up into their mouth. Just a little bit more today as we're talking about the insect's head. Caterpillars, which spend most of their time eating, also have chewing mouth parts. Some insects have a piercing, sucking mouth. The weevil, for instance, his mouth is at the end of a long, slender snout. This enables him to make deep, narrow holes in fruits, grains, and nuts. The large milkweed bug uses its tube-like mouth to pierce milkweed pods. It injects a special saliva into the pod and sucks out the dissolved contents. So it sticks it in there, in the pod, and then it kind of makes it goopy, 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 and then it sucks it all up. It kind of makes a little smoothie in there. Flies and mosquitoes have tiny lances around their sucking tube. Lances are things that like poke. So their, their sucking tube has a poker so it kind of can hold on. The male mosquito eats the juices of plants and flowers, but female mosquitoes would rather eat us. The bee has a chewing, lapping mouth. Its long, dagger-like tongue unrolls only as far as it's needed to reach the nectar that the bee desires. And these are our insect heads that we've been talking about, different head parts, right? We talked about, just now, the mouth. We talked about the, the eyes, that's right. We also talked about tiny, hair-like sensula, that's right. And we talked about antennae. Good job, guys. Good discussion today. Um, we will talk some more about insects in our next lesson about their motion. That's all for now. I'll see you later. Bye, scholars.